Hello, thank you very much for that. Um, so let's get started then. So first of all, my name is Simon Benson. Uh, I was privileged to get the XR Superstar tag, so I'll tell you a bit about myself before we get started and see if that's justified. So I run a business called Realize Realities, which is a virtual reality consultancy, uh, along with my uh, business partner, Jed Ashforth, who should be around some point over the next few days anyway. He'll be around, uh, keep your eyes open for him. Um, so we started that about six months ago now, but prior to doing that, I used to work for Sony as their um, director of immersive technologies. Uh, some things that I did at that point was, I've, I think I'm cited as inventor on over 50 uh, virtual reality and technology related patents. Um, but also one notable thing was we were instrumental in bringing PlayStation VR to Sony itself. So one of the founder members of that project, um, obviously very successful and one thing that we did with that, both myself and Jed, we were very, very focused on creating the user experience of what PlayStation VR offered. We also worked with pretty much every developer that created content you know, in the initial phase for PlayStation itself, supporting them, guiding them and doing whatever we could to you know, help them to create the best quality VR content. We also helped create the quality assurance process for all the PlayStation VR content and Jed himself wrote all of the best practice guides for uh, game design in virtual reality for PlayStation. Prior to working in the games industry, I worked in military R&D. Uh, so this goes back over 20 years now in the 90s when AR and VR were really, really expensive, uh, but still loads of fun and actually quite capable technologies. So I've got a lot of history working with immersive technology. So my presentation today is about the experience revolution. So when we think about technology revolutions, obviously look back to the 1800s and the industrial revolution, we can all understand how huge an impact these technology revolutions can have on the world and really catapult us forward. A more recent example was the information revolution uh, back in the 80s with the internet basically, connecting us all together, connecting us to information instantly, and again revolutionizing the world. So what I'm talking about today really is what I refer to as the experience revolution. You've probably seen this, this term thrown around quite a bit. But it's really starting with this new wave of virtual reality that started a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit today about where I think all this is going, what it all might look like and things like that. Now one key thing about XR related technologies, VR, AR, all the rest, is that really they are user experience in themselves. They are an experience tool. So they're, they're all about that. So what we're effectively doing, you imagine now with the internet and things like that and the way we can deliver data to people, but we're often looking at that in abstract forms, you know, on a rectangular two-dimensional screen and, and we've got to interpret and we've got to use interfaces that we have to interpret and learn. Whereas VR and AR allow us to break away with all that and see the data in its native form in a natural way and interact with it and reach out and touch it and immerse ourselves in this. And it really truly changes the way that we behave with the data around us. And even though we're at the very beginning of this entire cycle now, and it's very, very early for this technology, already we can do so many amazing things. We can immerse ourselves in amazing virtual worlds, wherever they may be. We can share the experience with friends, whether that be via remotely, via social VR applications, or locally by going to places like The Void with our friends and having a shared virtual reality experience. We can create in totally new ways. We can visit anywhere on Earth. Uh, we can go to places in space, other planets, places in the future, places in the past. All this is possible right now. We can use VR for our work, for our rest, and also for our play. So not a bad start overall, really, when you think about where we are now and this technology being so, so new in this generation for, for the consumer side of things. But really where we are is really on, on planet VR. We're still a bit outside of the main solar system here. This is a new thing, we're learning, we're exploring. There's still so much to be done. But the opportunity is out there in this mass market space and we're moving there all the time and we'll get there in the not too distant future. And that's all just great opportunity for us all. So let's have a look at some changes that XR is likely to bring to us as well. First of all, shared social VR experiences and AR experiences are likely to become the norm. We've already seen now that these VR related social apps are really taking off. You look at VR chat and the way people are really gravitating towards things like that. Facebook spaces, all these kind of things where people can just spend time with each other in VR and it's much more natural than just seeing people on a video screen or talking to someone as a disembodied voice in your head. People like playing games in this way where you feel like your person you're playing with is, is at the side of you, participating with you, even though you might be separated by hundreds of miles. But also, when it comes to work, work in virtual reality could be much more um, 
high value than it is in the real, real world because it's far more efficient. You don't have to travel to get there. You can just, like you do, pick up the phone and talk to someone. You can just pick, pick up a headset and be in, the same, in a, a shared space with someone collaborating on something. You can have any tool you want at your hand. You don't have to root around and find a tape measure. You can just magic one up and it's there. You can have any advanced tool you like. You can be in any workspace of any size anywhere in the world pretty much instantaneously. And this is going to transform the way that we all work and collaborate on things globally. VR is going to revolutionise education too. When you imagine the phrase, picture's worth a thousand words, well, how much is a VR experience worth when you're actually living and breathing the environment? And, you know, at school, every, every lesson could be a field trip. Everything you're actually experiencing, it's native form as it should be. And learning is going to be so much more accelerated, meaning we're either going to get a lot more free time or just learn an awful lot quicker and become more intelligent. And also, if there's any peripheral-related people in the room, I think peripheral is going to be a huge thing for virtual reality and augmented reality going forward too. I think, obviously, people will choose multiple tiers of the immersion that they want, but some people might be happy just to put a headset on and have their hands in there, and that's fine. The interface is fine for them. But for others, they might want to try the latest VR experience by putting on a full haptic suit and gloves and an exoskeleton and whatever it might be, and everything in between. So there's going to be a huge range of opportunity for how deeply people want to be immersed. So that's a lot about things that relate a lot to VR as it currently stands, but I want to talk a little bit about AR as well. But my core controller doesn't. Right, hang on. Sorry. Well, yeah, which we'll all wait for very, temp very momentarily while it comes back on the screen. Okay. Blast back through it. I know, is it? Keep going. This is where you wish you didn't have so many slides on your deck. Almost there. It's a quick recap for everyone who came in late. There you go. Okay, so start again. What about augmented reality? Brilliant. So the first thing to note is that VR and AR have got an awful lot in common. Really, if you imagine virtual reality and you just were in this room now and we just captured this room and played it back in our virtual reality thing, it's pretty much the same as what you would get with augmented reality. You know, you can create the effect of augmented reality in virtual reality, if you like. Um, so there's a lot in common. And, and the key thing there is that the domain knowledge easily transfers between the two. So really, when we're talking about one, we're kind of talking about both, really, in a lot of ways. Now, when it comes to AR, again, AR has been around for a long time, but it's only really now starting its mass market push, and it's doing that through smartphones, really. You know, obviously, uh, Apple and Google have done their AR kit and AR core announcements, and there's this big push. They've thrown down the gauntlet for developers to say, OK, go out there and find us great applications now that we can use augmented reality technology on to really push forward and, and, and find fantastic applications. When you think about what there is at the moment, there's probably only a handful of things that are quite successful augmented reality tools that people rely on a lot, like Snapchat, for example, is a good example of that. But there's not many, there's not enough for a consumer to think that they really need some augmented reality glasses, because they'd be like, well, what would I do with them? So they need to go through this cycle of developers finding these great applications, users understanding the value of them, and get to the point where the camera becomes almost its primary use would be for augmented reality, and we're forever getting our phones out and doing augmented reality things. And when it gets to that point in time, Tim Cook's probably going to stand up on his stage. He's going to say to everyone, hey, everyone, you know all this augmented reality we brought to you a while back, and we're all doing this all the time? It's a bit of a hassle, isn't it? Now, just imagine if you didn't have to do that, you could just put on some glasses, and it's always there for you all the time. And then we'll all think that Apple have just invented augmented reality. Everyone will go out and buy them, and everything will be great. But actually, it needs the time at the moment to go through that cycle, because the technology is just not ready. You can't really make consumer-friendly augmented reality glasses yet. And I think Magic Loop's first outing probably shows that, that you think this is really advanced technology and it's great and it works and all this kind of stuff, but you know, it's not yet consumer-friendly. It probably still needs to be costed down, it still needs to be made lighter and cheaper and all the rest of it, batteries last longer and things like that become more fashionable. And, and the nice thing is while we're waiting for that technology, we kind of have to go through this software cycle anyway of finding enough applications. So hopefully the two things will line up nicely and, and come together. And when that point does come around, you know, really, AR glasses are going to be in the position where they can truly replace the smartphone as we know it. And, and you can imagine how significant that's going to be to the world. And at that point in time, that's when really the experience revolution has truly arrived 
uh, in its true form. So we've talked a little bit about the future there, but I just want to wrap it up really with a, a few um, predictions on the whole thing overall. So I always like to talk about augmented reality and virtual reality and, and put sort of analogies to them. So I see virtual reality as very, very similar to the PC market, if you like. So when you think about or a virtual reality and what it's, what it's good at. It has a lot in common with the PC. So it's something that you probably sit down and engage with or stand up and engage with for some duration. You've got a purpose, there's a reason why you're gonna do that and you, you, you choose to opt into that as you would with using a PC. Um, PC is quite a good thing for doing things like socializing, doing homework on, doing your work on, you know, doing things like that. There's basically something for every member of the family. There's a good reason why you might want one in your household. Everyone's got a reason to have it. You can play games on it for, you know, so all these different things, the same really as what PCs had. And when you look back at the origin of PCs, so way back at the beginning when Bill Gates is up there saying, yeah, one day we'll all have them in our home and our office. And a lot of people thought that was absolute crazy talk at the time, um, because you know at the time PCs were, were quite new and all the rest of it. And, and that's pretty much where VR is now. It's kind of new, and, but I do think it is reasonable to say that, yeah, one day we probably will all have one in our homes and in our offices. And when you look at what PCs were like when this sort of statement was made, you know, this is an example here. And, but what you can see, the fundamental thing is that the actual interface isn't that different to the way the interface is now on PC. You know, the interface was actually correct. It was defined enough at that level to make this a viable thing that you could predict for and say, you know what, yeah, this really has got legs, this is going somewhere. And I think that's where VR is equivalently. I think you can look at a VR headset now and you can think, you know what, we've got all the basics right. Well, yes, we'd like more resolution. Yes, we'd like more performance. All those things are iterative things that are going to come in time. But fundamentally, we have the interface right, and we can now predict this is going to be a very successful thing. And I think augmented reality glasses have got a lot in common with the smartphone. Um, and again, you know, these things sort of coexisted, if you like, with the a, a parallel between PC and smartphone and, and AR glasses and VR glasses, which we'll, we'll look at in a sec. But, but when you look at the comparisons, you think, AR glasses, the reason why I say they like smartphone is because you'll use them for utility things, momentary things, things that don't necessarily engage a lot of time, but are very useful. Doing, you know, coming here this morning, I might use mine for navigating, then I'll get here, I'll quickly check some notifications. I'll do lots of little bite-sized things throughout the day, but I probably wouldn't engage them like I do with a PC where I would lock some time in and say, I'm gonna spend an hour and a half doing this one activity now. That's more of like the PC or VR related side of things, if you like more of an installation based thing. But when you look at where the smartphones were at the same time that, that PC had its great definition of its interface that we could see the success from and things like that, this was what the nearest thing you could think of to a smartphone, I guess, which was a portable telephone, which is nothing like a smartphone, doesn't have any of the features. You know, it wasn't even a practical telephone, portable telephone, to be honest. It was, it was way behind it. It was lagging behind where, you know, the equivalent PC was at the time, if you like, by quite a margin. And I think it took a long time with the technologies between uh, this, the phone itself to evolve to be a smartphone, probably like 20, 25 years before it got to that point. Whereas when you look at what happened with PC in the same time frame, it just kind of got more polished and more iterated, if you like, and, and just more refined and just better. You know, it didn't fundamentally change. And I think what we'll see is a very similar thing with AR and VR. I think VR is just going to keep iterating, getting better and better. I think AR is going to go through a more difficult cycle at first where it's finding its feet before it becomes more consumer focused, if you like. And then suddenly it'll be there and, and it'll really take off. But it's probably lagged behind. I don't think there's many, anything like this sort of distance. It's probably less than 10 years, but that sort of margin, you know, five to 10 years gap of where it lags behind the uh, VR technology. When we look at sales graphs as well, so this graph only goes to 2011, uh, but I can tell you what happens beyond that basically, but as you can see here, PCs followed a fairly reasonable trend, went up there. We know how big the PC market is, it's huge. Um, and what's happened then is the smartphone market came along and suddenly just skyrocketed and now it's about seven times the height of the PC market. It's just huge over the top of that, but it went up very, very quickly. And what happened when it crossed the line of the PC market is the PC market didn't suddenly decline and disappear. It kind of just plateaued. It's only recently plateaued in the last few years, really. So it shows these two technologies can coexist. And I think what we'd imagine is that the same thing is probably like to happen for augmented reality and virtual reality in that virtual reality is probably a great bet now to say, yeah, the interface is defined, we know what path it's on, it's gonna be pretty decent growth. It'll probably get to the size of the VR, there's a PC market, I would imagine, very similar, it's got very similar attributes. And AR related things, well, they'll be, they're going on now, we can see that, but in terms of a consumer proposition, it's gonna make it skyrocket. We're gonna to have to wait a while, five to 10 years, 
But when that time does come, that's going to shoot through the roof and probably be seven times bigger than the VR market. But won't kill the VR market, they'll just coexist and, and probably make, be, mark the point where VR plateaus. So that's a few predictions and a few ideas there. I think, you know, in summary, I think the, the key things are the future is very bright when it comes to XR related technologies. I think a few key points I would say for takeaways are that, yes, AR glasses are on the horizon, but not necessarily immediately around the corner in terms of a consumer proposition. Um, but now's a great time to be focusing on things like the virtual reality area, like the augmented reality on the smartphones and tablets and things like that. And all the skills you learn in this space anyway are just going to line you up so well for when it comes to the time for this AR glasses to just go supernova, basically, because the technology is very, very interchangeable and knowledge is very interchangeable. So thanks very much for listening. That's pretty much the end of my presentation. Um, Jed's now in the, in the space. You can see him at the back there. So you want to catch up with either myself or Jed. Um, he's over there as well. So we're available for the rest of the day to answer questions. And I'll be around tomorrow as well. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>